At the end, I would like to call Dr. Hena to give us a brief recommendation how to start implementing the VTE prophylaxis. If the hospital started to, the recommendation if the hospital already have the system and for those hospitals who do not have or which not have the system. Wow, amazing project. And I think I would like to, and on behalf of the ministry, um, I would like to congratulate the public sector as well as the private sector on these amazing accomplishments. And there are plenty of lessons to be learned. And I think the first thing is that we should take a lot of what we have learned across um, back to our hospitals. So with, in terms of um, what's next, I think we should start initially by um, educating healthcare providers on the importance of VTE risk um, assessments. Hospital officers should provide regular training and education to the healthcare providers on the importance of VTE risk assessment and its impact on patient outcomes. Develop standardized VTE risk assessment protocols. Um, hospital officers should work with healthcare providers to develop and standardize the VTE risk assessment protocols that can be easily implemented across all departments and patient populations. Incorporate VTE risk assessment into electronic health records. We should work with their IT departments to incorporate the risk assessment tools into the EHR systems, making it easier for healthcare providers to perform risk assessments and track VTE prophylaxis. Use multidisciplinary teams to implement VTE prophylaxis. Hospital officers should encourage the use of multidisciplinary teams to implement the VTE prophylaxis protocols. These teams should include physicians, nurses, pharmacists, and other healthcare providers to ensure that VTE prophylaxis is given appropriately and consistently. Monitor and evaluate the effectiveness of VTE prophylaxis. Hospital officers should establish ongoing monitoring and evaluation of the effectiveness of VTE prophylaxis protocols. This should also include tracking VTE incidence rates, compliance with prophylactic protocols, and patient outcomes. Regular review of data will help identify areas of improvement and guide ongoing efforts to optimize the VTE prophylaxis. So what about those of us who haven't started yet or we are on the first steps of implementing VTE prophylaxis protocols? We should provide patient education on VTE prophylaxis uh, and prevention. Healthcare providers should educate patients and their families about the VTE prophylaxis. We should use evidence-based VTE prophylaxis guidelines. So we should ensure that the evidence-based VTE prophylaxis guidelines are being followed when developing discharge plans for patients and etc. We should create discharge protocols that include VTE prophylaxis and we should work with healthcare providers to provide discharge protocols that include uh, all the latest recommendations provided today. These protocols should be tailored to each individual patient in, um, admitted to the hospital, including clear instructions for medication administration and follow-up. We should follow up with discharged patients through establishing a process for follow-up uh, for discharged patients to ensure that they are continually receiving prophylactic information. Like Dr. Najat mentioned, we should follow them up at home as well. We should um, collaborate with the community providers, such as primary care physicians and pharmacists, to ensure that discharged patients receive appropriate VTE prophylaxis outside of the hospital settings. This includes providing education on VTE prevention and ensure that patients have access to the necessary medications and follow-up care. I think we, have, we all agree that there's a lot of work to be done. And I think that the first place to start is in our own homes, which are where we spend most of our day in our hospitals. And I think the indicators program uh, has highlighted a lot of the achievements, uh, whether um, in um, single departments or organization-wide. And I think we should always continue 
to measure our performance because this is what's going to guide us in where we are going. Are we going in the right direction or we should modify our processes? And the worst thing is that if we put our efforts in um, and we work a lot and then find out that all our efforts are not actually yielding the, the outcomes that we hope for. Okay, so um, I'm honored um, after uh, giving you these recommendations to um, award all the winning projects that were presented uh, today and hopefully in the future we will continue uh, awarding more projects because this is only the first um, activity uh, in a line of many, many though, many of them to come, not only in VTE prophylaxis, but inshallah we will find more opportunities and we will um, do more competitions and more uh, opportunities for other um, organizations to provide their winning um, projects in other areas and other opportunities of improvement. So, Dr. Anouf. Thank you so much, Dr. Hena. I would like to thank all of you for attending on Saturday and for participating and sharing your experience in the VTE profile access. So now it's the time to honor all the speakers and all the participants in this uh, symposium. So we'll start with uh, Dr. Muna Al Rashid. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Dr. Anouf Manamet. She's been on top of this from the beginning, so congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Anouf, and thank you, the team. Thank you for the quality indicators team, Dr. Ahmed, uh, Dr. Ahmed Hisham, Dr. Walid, Dr. Walid Yusuf, Dr. Amal Khattab, uh, when by the team, Dr. Khalid, Dr. Khalid Chraq, um, and um, of course, um, وأخونا الأخ ميلر مهاني and دكتورة نوف if you want to طبعا أكيد الشكر لك دكتورة هنا for your support for making this symposium succeeding now I would like or we would like to honor دكتورة منى الرشيد so please give her a big hand Uh, it will give me a great honor to, we honor Dr. Muhammad Al Hajri, so please. طبعا غنية عن التعريف دكتورة نجاة روح الدين حياك الله دكتورة. طبعا دكتورتنا العزيزة دكتورة أمل خضر Thank you so much طبعا الحين ودنا نكرم المستشفيات اللي شاركوا معانا تجربتهم so we want to honor the hospitals that participate and share their experience in this uh, symposium. في البداية أحب أدعو فريق مستشفى الفروانية دكتور محمد الرشيدي دكتور علي المطيري دكتور أحمد الدوسري دكتور محمد المحيميد دكتور علي الجريوي دكتورة لمياء عبد الجواد كلكم تعالوا على الستيج ها مترون ايدا المطيري مترون رقيه عبد الله دكتور محمد سبوخ دكتور امل خضر ايضا دكتور خالد الشيخ سيده فاطمه البدر صيدلانيه بشاير وليد مهندس ابراهيم عبد السميع Mohandis Islam Mohammed, Shayma Afifi, and Sonia Thomas. Hayakum Allah. Thank 
أيضا نحب نكرم مستشفى الولادة الماترنتي هوسبيتال ممثل في دكتور بيتر وأيضا دكتور مشعل أسفة دكتورة مشاعل دكتور محمد حسن دكتور دكتورة أسماء دكتورة دينا دكتورة رانيا ودكتورة حنان تفضلوا لو سمحتوا حياكم الله نحب أيضا نذكر ونكرم مستشفى الجهرة ممثل في دكتور محمد الهاجري دكتور أحمد زيدان دكتور وائل النحراوي دكتور علي عرفة ودكتور أحمد ماضي تفضلوا طبعا نحب نكرم ايضا المستشفيات الخاصه اللي شاركت معانا اليوم ثانك يو فور اول ذا برايفت هوسبيتال ذات شير ذير اكسبيرينس توداي وذ اس سو وي وود لايك تو انفايت نيو مواسات هوسبيتال يعطيكم العافية شكرا جزيلا. Now we would like to invite uh, Sip Hospital team, so please come to the stage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now we would like to invite uh, Dar Shifa Hospital. So please uh, join us on the stage. في النهاية وعن إدارة الجودة الاعتماد في وزارة الصحة نود تكريم الأخ ميلر مهني حق تعب معانا وترتيبه يعطيك العافية شكرا جزيلا At the end, I would like to thank everybody. Thank you so much for participating in this vital symposium uh, and attending and sharing your experience in the hospitals, whether governmental or private hospital. Thank you so much.